Hi, how you going? Welcome back to part three of this retro studio. I am um, in this one. We're gonna move along to the doors and the windows. Just try to finalize the like actual structure of the interior, and then we can start to play. I think we're gonna do the after that. Hopefully, the kitchen. So um, let's just jump right in, and um, uh, let me know what you're thinking in the comments, or if there's anything you want to see. Okay, thanks. Okay, here I'm just starting to um, set up the door. Just getting the scale correct. Start the sweet profile here. Probably a bit too excessive, but I might pull it back a bit later on, I think. This is actually the third iteration of the door. I cut the first two I was doing, just was finding it wasn't working. I had a very traditional looking door that didn't look right. Then I had a very modern door that matched the kitchen, which was very much inspired by Norm Architects. And that didn't look right either. Um, in the end, I just decided to have like a very normal door frame and a, um, I'm making a pocket door here. Um, just sort of felt right for the tight space of the bathroom and also the other room. Um, I just I just couldn't figure out how I would make it look that I'd like to match the space. Yeah, I'm just shivering all the corners. Here I'm just trying to cut a hole for the um, pull in the door and then I just realized it's silly to do this with uh, edible poly and I switch it up to a, just a spline which is the fastest way to make a door with a hole in it. If it's just going to be flat, it's silly to do it this way. It just shows you, you know, even with a lot of experience that sometimes it just takes you a second to realize that there's a better way to do something. So here I am just making a spline um, with a hole in it joined together and then you just extrude that you've got yourself a door with a hole in it the geo is fine if you chamfer it so you don't need more than that and then you're just gonna if you need to chamfer it it's pretty simple it's gonna accept it pretty well with a chamfer modifier and yeah, just modeling the um, door pull i think these turned out a little bit too big so i'm gonna have to shrink them down i realized at the end there that they were just a bit too big but at least the door is non-collapsed so try to keep everything non-collapsed so you can go back and edit it it's faster than having to rebuild it so Just putting a little plate inside so it's not all the way through. <clears throat> just applying our normal material that's on the skirts. But I go ahead and change it after this because I'm actually just not happy with the way it's looking. Yeah, that's good. I didn't want the. I ended up thinking that the doors just needed to look very much like a warehouse conversion, nothing special. So I think that's plenty good. I was about to slice the corners of these to make the chamfer, just like we did with the skirting, but then I realized that it needed to be capped. So. 
Otherwise you can't cap the edges when you cut them and it doesn't work. So I'm also just changing the scale here of these um, details. We're just we're getting a bit too excessive. Just changing the mapping on this top beam so it's correct. This is a bit of a polygon there, but it doesn't matter. No one sees it. And here I just imported another. This is for the front door of the, the apartment. Just imported another warehouse door I built for another project, which I, is too big of a project to me, for me to finish. Um, my goals are too lofty on that one, I think. And so I've been sort of dragging my feet on it. It's sort of a, a bigger. I want to model the full exterior and the full interior. Cause What's in my head is just, I just, it's too big. And I've been thinking about it for like two years. So um, I just took the chipped paint material from there, which is just actually a concrete texture uh, for the diffuse. And that actually really creates like a nice dirty painted um, all the doors, which, you know, this apartment's not brand new. So it's, I wanted to have a bit of a warning look there. So this door will be closed. Here's the front door from that other project. And I'm just going to alter it because I don't want the wood showing. I want it to be like this galvanized metal plates across the whole door. So it's just something I modeled previously. So it's really helpful to pull models and materials from other projects. It just, it simplifies the process a lot. I do it all the time. If I've done something before, there's no point doing it twice. It's the same as people get this gnarly thought pattern that you can't use bought models. You have to model everything or else you're not a real art artist. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, do you want to, you can either spend, you know, four months modeling every model in the entire space, or you could do a week, do the whole thing in a week if you bought the models. Like, you know, I'd rather produce, you know, eight spaces in the same amount of time. It took me to model every piece. Like, I do model things and add them to the library. I do it in this episode. I model the um, a console unit next to the front door here. But that's just something I've been wanting to add, and it's a very simple model. You know what I mean? It's not a big deal, but something. And sometimes I can't model as well as someone else, so I let them take over. Why not? Like, in my commercial work, I hire professional modelers, even though I used to model on feature films. I just, it's people, uh, some other people, creators are better than me at it. So I'm happy to use those services that I can or purchase a model if it makes, makes my, speeds up my workflow here. So there we go, the door set up now, I'm just adjusting. This is not properly finished. I need to readjust these skirts properly in this living room when we get to it, which will be, I think, right after the kitchen. Um, I also have to work out what to do at the back of the kitchen there. There's a bit of space and uh, I think it's a bit of an empty space so I'm going to figure out what to do with that. And um, this is me just stealing the windows from the previous um, side. And I'm just using an FFB box and I'm just pushing it around. That's fine. Like, who cares? It doesn't matter. We're just trying to get a scene together here. We're not trying to, you know, give ourselves grief for no reason. When it comes to the render time, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, I'm just trying to set up a render to see what it looks like the door. Got some, I'm using a relink bitmap there to relink my bitmaps. It's a great plugin all the time. Bitmaps may fall off and here I'm just adjusting the galvanized metal before I had it painted galvanized metal. So I had a different texture on top in the diffuse slot and then everything else was um, normal. So I'm just re-piping those. Adjusting my brass, which was too bright um, for the hardware down. And um, yeah, I like how I modeled this door with the, the rivets pushing in the metal. It's, um, it's a nice look. When you see the final render, you'll see what I mean. And um, 
here's I'm realizing I needed some sort of thing to give context to that um, front door it may not be the final placement but this is a um, I think it's I'm not sure who designed this it's, you can get it from Vitro if it's I found it from this this configurator from UCM and you can configure how you want these metal cabinets which is from my reference um, so here I'm just basically building a high detail model of the of the bad geo um, going quick here it doesn't need to be perfect um, geo because this is art you know what I mean like it's you know we don't have to have perfect geo every time you know but yes it's good to have it it's good practice if I can do it I will but if it's gonna take me too long and I can just rotate a ball I'm not smoothing this in any way just adding a little chamfer to the edges and that's it now I'm just grabbing a chrome material from the chairs we did before and um, I just wanted to see what it looked like just setting up my structure here so I can turn it on off the base geo from the, from the website I like this cabinet, it's just because it's modular. It's very easy to model. It makes a big difference. You know what I mean? Like it's so quick to build this into anything. The configurator is really good because you can like change the drawers and build whatever you want. I mean now I've built like the connection pieces, like pretty much could build whatever you want now. You could build all the pieces and then just assemble it into different um, looks and stuff like that. I think in the living room I've got an idea of a cabinet, which would be a custom metal cabinet. That I'd like to build. Bring a bit of color in there. And all this geo is live, and then I'll just go in instances and I'll just collapse it and join it. My preference is to have one complete mesh, even with multiple materials combined together for placement. Unless it's something with like a displacement map on it where it needs to be separate. Um, even though you can do that with like a material ID, I just prefer to have everything as one one mesh. It just simplifies the scene. Otherwise, you got hundreds. You can imagine if each one of these connection balls was a different geo mesh. It'd be a nightmare. It'd be an absolute nightmare. For some reason, that piece of geo won't show the material. Yeah, I'm just looking at my reference to see what I want. There's some um, chromes a good starting point but it's just a little bit too clean and too reflective so here I'm just changing the um, scale of the, the fingerprint texture I've got in there this is just something I've got in my library it's worth having like a chrome like this ready to go and just now I, what I had an idea to do is to add a dust layer and you put that on a, like a fall off and um, let it sit on the top using the direction of the fall off yeah, I'm just trying to. Sorry, the window window is a bit out of the out of the screen. I'm working on like a ultra 49 inch super wide monitor, so it's very hard for me to convert back into like a standard window frame in the middle of the screen. I'm just adding. I'm just fussing with the material here, trying to add a bit of bump to the the dust, but then it's just not worth it. So it's very. This is a very one of those very subtle things, but just something I wanted to add. I thought it'd be cool. I may, I'll probably save it to the library so it's ready to go. And um, here I'm just I wanted to bring in a, a bottle, a glass bottle, to see what the um, dust was looking like on top of it. And that's right there was when I realised the cabinet was in inches, and so um, it's the wrong scale. So I'm just combining everything and shrinking it and then we reset the X forms. So um, really frustrating. Should have should have realized it was in inches. This is another material I've got saved in my library from a previous job which is just a uh, glass material, which is like a blown glass material. 
So now I'm just trying to fuss with the fall off so it's just more on the top. I'm just trying to figure it out. I haven't actually done this. So I was just trying to work out how to make it look and what I was, you know, trying to do it on a glass bottle so it's simpler to see it. So. sort of like two um, figures that we're adjusting at the, the normal value and this um, Z direction so it's just trying sort to of figure out where which controls to fuss with to um, adjust it now I don't know how to do this I'm just working it out as I go um, you know, I've seen it before in other tutorials so I was just giving it a go myself so you can see it there you can adjust it on the on the scale of the, the actual mesh just a little bit of um, dirt on the top, where exactly where it would land. I'm just trying to duplicate the drawers as they created that's my little I don't know if anyone else does that I use that uh, FFF box to um, adjust things in an angle it's so simple especially if you want to put an arc on like a multiple vertices you just grab like a, a three box and then just pull the middle vertice it's just like a super fast trick to get a nice angle without having to move every vertice yeah I'm just clearing the mesh that I made a mistake on I'm trying to give it some depth here now I'm just grabbing a um I've got a metal texture saved in my library, it's got a little bit of noise on it, which is like a powder coated metal ready to go. It's just it's just a base metal with a, a glossiness map and then uh, a strong noise that just gives it a little bit of the bump. And now I'm just seeing if I can add the same dust on top but mixed with a smudges map. Just looking through my dirt map library. here it's the opposite way and there it's way too much yeah I was thinking there would be like a base layer of dust not just these bright brush strokes so here I'm adjusting I'm not sure this really turned out how I wanted it I just don't think the dust there looks right I just don't know if it's really worth it but here I just adjust it down and it just doesn't look right to me it's not how things would look in real life so I think I just ended up blending like a little layer of dust over the top to give it like a base level giving it a rounded edge in the on like really thin geometry like this it's way easier to do it in the material than it is to do it in the geo I think that looks all right it's got just a mottled look now we can just pull it around and readjust it It's an easy cabinet to build. It's just the same pieces rescale. And now this front door panel, um, it's a bit different to the other ones. It's got a bit more of a special edge to it. So I'm just box modeling it. This is probably way overkill, but who knows? We may pull a hero shot out here.
use symmetry all the time, it just like, makes your life a lot easier. I'm just duplicating it across there, so we got four sides. I don't know why they wouldn't let me cap that center. It's just very odd. I just had to bridge it and then it was fine. I don't know why it wouldn't let me. Everything was welded. But it could be 3D Studio Max, could be me. You never know. Here I am using the slice tool just at the slice edge tool, but it's being really frustrating. It gets to that point where it won't go any closer to the edge, depending on the scale of the object. This gets a little frustrating. I just wanted to smooth this. Apply the same material. Now I'm just going to do this um, lock handle. You guys just let me know if you want to see this thing. <clears throat> it's just my normal process for modeling props, furniture. Um, I know it's just basic problem modeling. I'm not the best modeler. I used to be a lot better, but I spend my time more concentrating now on like the whole scene and things like that. And you know, when I need to model a prop, I can just deep dive and go in there. But I feel like I've been using more plasticity lately to try to learn some of that hard surface modeling, which is really fun. Um, yeah, I'm not building all the parts of this, but just enough. It's pretty, pretty easy little piece to model. If I model it in enough detail, then I don't need to, you know, I used to turbo smooth everything. I <laughs> just, there's no point if you can add the shape of modifier or something like that, and then you can get away with no smoothing, just reduce the amount of polys in the scene. Pretty, you know, most of the time it's just fine. You don't need it. So just do the little foot here. And do this with the lathe modifier. You can see I've got on top of my modifier stack there like my most used tools. It's just super e super useful to have those. Makes it, you know, I'm not digging through menus. Ever since I set that up, it's so much better. I just, those are my everyday tools that I'm reaching for all the time you know you, you gotta have these things in 3 studio max it does make it a bit pain when you gotta upgrade to the next one you gotta reset everything up i'm on max 2020 here but definitely time to go to 2023 i think um here yeah, i'm just duplicating the cabinet which is so easy to duplicate there you go it's all finished uh, on that foot as well i just pulled a rubber out of my library that i've made previously i've got like a standard set of things in that material library of chrome oh you know oak and glass and rubber metal just you know you should have one of those things you can save those libraries and every time you open it in your material library there it is ready to go and here's just my normal process if i want to like set up a prop for the library i use connector so um sometimes i don't even bother with the whole backdrop i just throw it there and render it depends how how much effort i want to put in just checking things here there's too much fingerprints on that one just turning it down sorry it's off screen the render but i'm actually just turning down the amount of fingerprints on that um yeah here i go just adjusting the colors but all of these things, are, you know, it's built in isolation here. We're going to have to adjust these things in the scene. Um, you can, you always have to adjust your materials to the, to the scene. The lighting is different. It's not studio lighting. It's going to reflect differently. It's going to be too bright. It's going to be too saturated. You have to adjust it. So I always set up my props here to be the best as I can, but then I'm always going back in and readjusting. So just brought that prop in. 
I've got this my connector occasionally stops working and I can't drag things to the scene I have to use this uh, drop all plugin which is really frustrating that it does that sometimes but for just certain scenes it gets to like a uh, point where it just won't won't let me do it I'm also not sure if you saw there I ran the cine tools for Renzik on on the model before I saved it and that just helps me like eliminate any animation layers which just creep in from everywhere and slow down the save times dramatically so here's me just setting up a shot just to sh I just wanted to put some plants there probably temporary I don't know about the structure of this uh, living area so here I'm just playing with the lighting I'm trying to light for this shot I'm just adjusting the camera so it works quite well with the light from the existing position but I think I rotate the light here to try to just um, adjust it from the other direction I don't know if I recorded that there we go so it's got a nice sheen on the door there I'll just wait for this to finish okay so that that's it for this part three. Um, this is where we got with the final render. I'm liking how it's looking. The the doors look quite dirty. I don't know if I'll have to pull that back a bit. Uh, I like how this front door is looking. It's really warehousey. Nice galvanized metal on there, like a scrape base plate. Um, this looks great. I think I like that. Will be great for some styling. Um, got some ideas for that. And uh, I also adjusted the glass, the glass up here a little bit. Um, it's hard because I'm trying to see, it's looking a bit too wide outside, but it's hard with this bump on this glass to get the sort of look that I want. So I'll see how it looks because I hate when you see renders and it's just wide out the outside. It really frustrates me. And um, I like this plaster edging here. It's looking good. And um, so yeah i think in this space here we may have to put like shift this over and put like a uh wall hook and stuff like that i want to be like someone lives here they're going to come home they're going to throw their keys down and chill in their space this warehouse conversion space so um i think next time we're gonna work on the kitchen i think it's time to work on the kitchen um i want to build those cabinets and mainly i want to get to the like vintage veneer on it and we'll see what that sort of looks like um, I've done some vintage veneer before, but um, back then I just wasn't a skill with the materials, so I'd like to have another shot at that. And then um, once that's done, I think we're going to move to the living room, and I've got some ideas for some furniture pieces. I want to bring a little pops of colour in there and um, make it interesting. And then after that, not sure where we'll move on to, um, I would maybe at some point we're going to have to move to building a little bit of exterior to see out the windows behind the curtains and um, I think um, yeah we'll leave that there for this one um, uh, any comments would be appreciated if anyone's enjoying these videos I um, hope they're not too long and there is some value there uh, let me know otherwise um, I feel like I'm yelling into the void I don't know if anyone's interested so let me know in the comments and if you made it to the end here, uh, congratulations and thanks.